Welcome to this edition of Inside Connect. I'm Danielle Waugh and I'm with Lara Bryn Greenberg and Alex Zuckerman, two members of Connect who worked in a story on the Westcott Theater. And Lara, as the reporter behind this story, I wanted to know why you decided to do it in the first place. I really wanted to do a story on the music scene here in Syracuse. And a lot of people say that there isn't one, that in order to see good live music or go to a good concert, you have to go as far as Albany, Rochester, Rochester, Buffalo. So I kind of wanted to prove them wrong. So I, you know, looked into the different theaters in the area, Landmark, and I even looked into Turning Stone, even though it's further out. And I decided to do the Westcott Theater because it's really close to the Syracuse University campus, but it's also part of the whole Westcott area. It's an entire community in itself. Um, and I like the Westcott Theater. It has an interesting history because it used to be um, a cinema and then it renovated in recent years, just in the last two years, and became this theater. So it has a really interesting backstory. So I thought it'd be a good story to do. And Alex, you were a latecomer into this story from what I understand. I was. Can you explain why you decided to be a part of it? Um, well, I joined Lara because earlier in the day when she went to go film Sophistafunk, we were talking and I expressed interest in seeing Soul Live, the main band, and um, it just so happened that her videographer got sick the night of the show, so she called me up and I ended up going to the concert with her. Before doing this story, had either one of you ever been to the Westcott Theater before to either see a movie or to see a show? Um, yeah, I've been to some shows there. I saw a Beatles cover band there, which was my first show at the Westcott Theater. And it was just a great time. I really think that it's a great venue, and it reminds me of a big city venue like Philadelphia or New York. And I hadn't been yet, but since I've done the story, I have gone to see a show there. Just because being there filming the story with Alex, she was a great help, and it, it was really intriguing kind of place. It's really just cool. There's no other word for me to describe it. It's a cool place. It's big, um, and you can get right up and close with the band performing. So I've since gone to a concert there, and it was awesome. Are these concerts very well attended? It depends on the concert. Uh, what the owner told me, Dan Mastronardi, was that for most shows, they tend to get between 100 and 200 people, but they do have bigger shows, and they've sold out about a dozen times. The show I went to was a pretty big show. It depends on who's there. There's also a lot of entertainment that goes on at the theater besides just the concerts. I think when we were there, there were Chinese yo-yo guys just like having a blast, people on stilts, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of crazy. In the course of working on this story, I understand you talked to a number of people, a number of sources and interviews. Do any of the interviews stick out to you in particular? I really liked interviewing the former owner of the theater when it was still a cinema. He was this cute old man, his name is Nat Tobin. And when he owned the Westcott Cinema, he also owned the Manliest Cinema, which he still does. I've been to the Manliest Cinema to see movies also. He was just really cute, and you could tell that he really missed the Westcott Cinema. He still has Manliest, but there was something about the Westcott and about the area. He had this great camaraderie with the other local business owners of the restaurants and stuff. So. He, he started to cry towards the end of the interview. I felt bad, I didn't mean to make him cry, but he started to cry because he just missed the area and missed the theater. Now, you said you've been to these shows before, and having worked on this story and seeing it from that perspective, what do you think about the way the Westcott Theater is impacting that surrounding area of the Westcott Nation? Um, it's definitely brought it to life. When we were at the show, there were people outside just having a good time outside of Alto Cinco and Metro or across the street, and everybody was just kind of asking what we were doing, which is really great for the show, but also great for just the whole community there. So it's definitely had a positive impact. Your story is mostly positive. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Westcott Theater. Did you run into any negative aspects? Did anybody have anything bad to say? The people that I interviewed when I was there didn't, because obviously they were there for a reason. You know, they wanted to see a show and they were having a good time. Um, but I did speak to some students after I did my story who were a little miffed about the Westcott, because there are some rules. Um, when you're under 21, you can still go to the shows, but there's no re-entry if you leave. So, for instance, this girl I spoke to had been to shows there before, and when she wanted to go outside to have a cigarette, 
she couldn't come back in because she was under 21. And there are just some policy things like that about the age and underage that people had problems with. But other than that, everybody enjoyed it. Well, sounds like both of you had a great experience covering the Westcott Theater. Lara and Alex, thanks for being here. This has been Inside Connect.